This is Mark, aka the Techno Bear. I wanted to do a quick video to show you around the new features that I've been developing for Agglotti um, that are going to be released shortly to do with libraries and their usage. So, previously in Axolotl, we just had files to open an object search path. In the new version, we've actually um, made it so it's a little bit more organized. So, here I've started Axolotl. Now, when you upgrade Axolotl, to the new version, what will actually happen is it will go to the internet and actually automatically download and synchronize the factory and news library um, from the internet. Uh, don't worry, I will show how this can be avoided if you have your Axolotl connected to a machine that's not connected to the internet. But let's get started. So the first thing the users, as users you're going to notice is when you bring up a new patch, you'll now see that Libraries are actually the top level of the object search menu. So we can actually see here we are Techno Bears libraries. We know I've got the push controller in here, but the factory objects are all under the factory tree. So, what I want to do is to show you a little bit about how this actually works. Um, and also, in a later video, I'll show you how you can create your own libraries um, and also contribute to the user library. So let's start off with how this actually works. So if we now go to the Preferences menu, what we can actually see is that the object search path has been replaced by this library section. Um, and what we can actually see is there are three libraries already defined. Factory, which is the uh, Axolotl objects that you know and love. Um, the Home uh, one, which is, uh, I'll show you in a moment, but basically is a place for you to place your objects and patches in such that they can be found easily and you can create more of these if you wish and then the community library um, aka the, the user library and you can actually see over here that there are two types of libraries so-called git libraries which are the ones that are stored on the internet and synchronized from the internet automatically and then the local libraries which are just literally directories on your disk now what I actually want to show you very quickly is if we actually look at our Axolotl's home directory here so you can put your Axolotl is press files. You'll actually see that also can be three. There, um, there are two directories, Axolotl contrib, which represents the community library, Axolotl factory, and also there is now by default an objects and a patch directory. And what you'll see is actually, if I show you the factory one very briefly again, you'll see that these also have an objects and patches directory. And that's always true of libraries, but at the top, the library is the top level thing and it will then have direct subdirectories which contain objects and patches separately. And so your home library here is somewhere where you can place things in. So if we look at the factory, we see a similar structure where we have audio objects, uh, right, left, etc. Um, and actually if we come into preferences here, we can actually edit the preferences and we can actually see that that also relates to the directory that I've been showing you. So it says here, this is the local directory. And then this is actually where it's located um, externally. You don't have to worry about this. Um, now, this is actually a development version. So I'm actually, I've locked this to version 1.06. When the new release comes out, it will be the new release number. So um, why, why the changes? Well. The biggest change really is actually something that's just one small function that the user sees. And that is if we go back to the file menu here, we now have this option called sync libraries. And what will happen is if I click that, if it's all instantaneous, but what happens is actually the uh, local copy that you've got is compared to the copy on the internet and is basically synchronized so that you automatically get new versions, which means we can do things like release new versions of factory objects um, without actually having to release the entire software again. So that's the first advantage. The second thing is this actually synchronizes all the libraries and you can actually see it says it's synchronized the community, which means that if somebody had actually uploaded and shared new objects, those would also instantly become available to you in the object browser. Um, now, well, currently the way I've got it is that it's a manual process, you do file sync libraries. It is actually possible to come into here and if you edit one of these libraries, you'll actually see there's an option for auto sync here. And what that will do is it means that whenever you start Axlotl, it will go and synchronize the library 
from the internet. That's, that's quite useful. Um, the reason I don't do it by default is that obviously it's kind of nice if you've got a patch working, if you know, uh, if you start it up and it suddenly doesn't work, you don't want to um, have to think, oh, was it because I synchronized the libraries, etc. So uh, currently I do it manually. We, we may revert that, we may actually decide we're going to do it um, automatically.